Oh, definitely a great uh, air conditioning unit here this week. <laughs> I saw Dana earlier in match play uh, putting on her coat as she came back uh, off the lanes. So she was trying to keep warm. You want to keep that consistent feel. Through the nose it goes, and she leaves the 4-7. We mentioned uh, the colorful blouse that she's wearing. It's uh, one that was uh, created by an Indian tribe, and uh, of course she does have Indian heritage. Her mother is 100% or I guess 50% Osage Indian. Her grandfather was 100% Osage, an Indian tribe out of the state of Oklahoma. Well, in 1982, uh, Dana was inducted into the Indian Sports Hall of Fame. And that's a, a pretty good accomplishment for her as she has only begun bowling at the age of 21. Already with eight professional victories and uh, an outstanding championship round record of 32 and 18 coming in. So she's been the kind of player that's taken advantage of the championship round when she's gotten to that point. Powerful shot in the seventh, but she still trails in this match by 15. To that young lady right there, Tish Johnson, will be back in just one moment. 25 with a strike here. We saw Tish uh, start out with six in a row to win her title earlier this year, the 1991 Central Florida Classic in Winter Park. She shot 235 to defeat Wendy McPherson. And as you can see, Tish playing around the 7-8th board there uh, actually trips out the 6-8 equivalent to the 4-9 on the right. Trying to make it four in a row, and now she has a commanding 35 pin lead with a possible 259. We didn't expect to see that kind of a score in game number one. Something uh, the left-handers on the telecast uh, are not used to is they're going to find that the lanes are going to change for them uh, a little bit more throughout the telecast than normal. And uh, this is what happened in the U.S. Open, and I talked to them afterwards, and they said, yeah, you know, I've never had four left-handers play on the same pair before. And... Uh, this is what we get as a right-hander uh, quite a bit. We see these, the lanes changing, whereas uh, the left-handers really don't. 234, the best possible score that Dana Miller-Mackey could shoot here in game number one, but uh, she must strike here to apply any pressure whatsoever here to the opening match. there in the ninth frame. Terrific shot for Dana Miller-Mackey, who uh, stays within striking distance, I guess you could say. Well, we've often talked about a little controversy throughout the week, or uh, certain things happen, and you find that uh, sometimes this player goes on to win the tournament, so uh, she's into it right here. And the 7-10 pops up for Tish Johnson in the ninth, which changes this one dramatically in the latter stages. A little pressure. Tish mentioned uh, that uh, it's not comfortable for her to point the ball, and uh, when you're really not comfortable with it and the pressure is applied, you have a tendency to pull it a little bit, and uh, I think she might have pulled that one a little bit too far. When you try and square up and point the ball, it's a much different feel in your backswing. The release is a lot different. I'm, it's a testament to the players that are able to make those adjustments in mid-tournament, but, but sometimes under pressure, you're right. Well, all of a sudden, you revert back to what you like to do or you overdo the other. The next thing you know, you go through the nose, and her best possible game now is 225. Boy, this one's flipped around in a hurry. Just one bad shot, one key shot. Could make the difference for Tish Johnson this evening. Well, it came down to the 10th frame uh, this afternoon for Tish. She needed a spare to make it into the telecast, and uh, she uh, threw a great shot, struck, and uh, went around Robin Romeo. Robin missing by just eight pins. Tish won six of eight matches this afternoon to qualify for the telecast. 
needs this one desperately though to really have any shot whatsoever. Boy, right now she's thinking if I just had that shot back in the ninth, this would be over right now. Anna Miller now will be forced to throw at least a double in the 10th frame. So hats off to Tish Johnson, who was able to rise to the occasion after the errant toss in the ninth frame. Tish's roommate, uh, Vicki Lee, at home in California celebrating her birthday. Tish wanted to wish her a happy birthday. Come from behind effort for Tish Johnson, who now must sit back and wait to see what happens. 24 the game for Tish Johnson with an open in the ninth. Right now, Dana Miller Mackey needs a double and one pin, basically to stay behind the line. Shot couldn't trip out the six pin, and so it'll be a fifth place finish for Dana Miller, who made a game run with strikes in the seventh, eighth, and the ninth. She also doubled in the third and the fourth. It was an open in the second frame that really made the difference for her. Really a pretty good shot that time. It looked as if she threw the ball a little bit slower, though, and it just uh, came up a little bit too high and wasn't able to get out that six pin. A little disappointment written on that face, but. Uh, Nevertheless, first championship round appearance of the new year, and hopefully those health problems out of the way. Well, she moved uh, the, during the first tournament. She was unable to bowl. Uh, she was moving back into the country from uh, Australia, and she's now residing in Fort Worth, Texas, with her husband, uh, Steve Mackey. So she'll be close to home next week as we move on to uh, Garland, Texas. One final shot, and of course, you always strike on the fill ball when it doesn't make any difference. Good opening match, 224-213.